We exchange as open systems at least information, energy, and usually material as well, interaction. And uh, I found that nice quote. I, only recently did I come across a book by Margaret Wheatley. She wrote one book called uh, Leadership and the New Science about chaos and creativity and quantum physics and leadership. And with her colleague together, uh, Myron Kellner Rogers, she wrote another book which is called A Simpler Way. And I thought, that sounds like this in some way, A Simpler Way. And in that book I found that nice line saying about complex systems, organization, everything participates in the creation and evolution of its neighbors. Everything participates in the creation and evolution of its neighbors. There are no unaffected outsiders. No one system dictates conditions to another. There are no unaffected outsiders. No one system dictates conditions to another. All participate together in creating the conditions of their interdependence. I thought, what a lovely quote about thinking about the importance of having neighbors and having that exchange or doing that exchange and continuing on that. And I meant that to sort of underline what made me choose that topic Because I thought, how did I get to SF? And I realized I've been in other areas before. I mean, none of us has been clean slate when entering SF, and none of us probably has sort of forgotten about everything else when entering SF, but SF in the beginning was an addition. And then it, it has become more or less sort of focus for everybody, but the neighbors didn't go away from that. And I love to have those connections sort of present in our maps of our action, of our doing, of our solution-focused work under something like, yes, solution-focused, and what else? And I realized from reading in the program or listening to people even today, there was that open space thing by Anton, Ubuntu, how we are connected, neighbors. There was this idea of growing and learning is something which is very much interactivity. Nobody does it alone. There was this Michael Yers micro tool of the PLUS that basically states, you know, you, you recall that uh, PLUS mode, and you may not have heard about that, that's an acronym saying solution focus word starts with the platform, what is there already, then you look far ahead towards the future, Distinguish what would you like to see and what do you dread. Then you utilize what's there already, all resources, and then you take a step. Which in another way means whatever step you want to take, there is always the look far ahead present and the utilizing resources and the platform. You never take a step in isolation. You always take a step in the context of the other three. So again, it's interacting with the neighbors in that abstract landscape. Or, I just was at Mark Nicargo's thing, and I was surprised to hear Mark talk about SF within the larger landscape of organizational development. Mm -hmm. Because at some point in time, I had sort of offered a similar topic to an SF event, and it had been gladly declined mm -hmm. as not SF enough in some way. And sort of, SF has moved on, and now seems to be in a state where it remembers that it does have neighbors indeed, that there's more on the landscape. Solutions is not the only focus in SF. And we had SF and improvisation, SF and burnout, SF and flow management, SF and positive psychology and classroom coaching and whatnot. So there's many neighbors to that. We have all those subgroups in the main side, you know, so we are deeply connected. One way of seeing how deeply we are connected is uh, thanks to Bert and the Dutch colleagues, you remember that one? Mm -hmm. That was in Texel, connecting the people. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
just showing how connected everybody is that it was hard to escape the connections afterwards, you know? That's the trick in there. For three days they went. Uh, yeah, three days. Uh, Nobody yeah. moved, you know, <laughs> talking about freeze and unfreeze, you know, organizational development. So this is uh, connecting. And I thought, what a nice picture. Illustrating how connected we are. And uh, and then I recall one thing, a story from another tradition. And I would like to tell you that story just before starting with the work. And here's an illustration of that story. That was window decoration around uh, Christmas time. All those shiny round objects, each mirroring all the others. And I thought, what a nice illustration to that traditional, probably Hindu, story that I found in a book called The Healing Heart, Communities, Storytelling, Cox and Oliver. And I want to read it. It says, When Indra, the king of the gods, heard that Buddha planned to use his powers to ascend to the Tushita heavens, he began to prepare his palace for the world honored one. As splendid as the palace was, Indra was not satisfied, and so he gathered together a hundred billion trillion jewels of every type. Diamonds, sapphires, rubies, pearls, amethysts, and more, until the great palace was filled with an uncountable number of jewels, strung together in a giant net, larger than that. Like a rainbow flashing spied away, Indra then spread the net across the ceiling and the walls of the great hall and the palace, creating a blaze of dazzling light. When Buddha arrived, he entered the great hall of Indra's palace and saw the sparkling net of jewels draped all around him and marveled at the infinite number of brilliant stones twinkling in the palace. And then he said to Indra, This great net of beautiful jewels is indeed wondrous to behold. The nature of reality is just so as well. Observe. In every flashing jewel, the reflection of all the other jewels, just like you. And within those reflections, the reflections of all those reflections, forever and ever, until every jewel is all at once in every other jewel as well. Just so is the nature of reality. And then it goes on for a while until, and I will skip a small part of that, until it reaches at, at every moment all that is of the world within you, and you are within all that is of the world. Although you may be said to exist independently in one sense, in a greater sense you are a part of the vast interpretation of all things. You could not exist alone. Only by the glorious existence of all other things can you exist. Take care, then, to always cherish the things which support you, for they are as much a part of you as you are yourself. Swept with joy, Buddha's words in drop bowed to remember the glorious truth of interdependence. He took the great net of a hundred billion trillion jewels and spread it over the entire sky so that all who looked to the heavens would be able to see and understand the glorious nature of all things. And every night, it shines still. I thought, hey, something, you know, a, a small reflection of that as the future of SF. You know, like a little bit more SF reflected in many other things, you know, all those neighbors to appreciate. Mm -hmm.